make sure that you can make plays on the turrets. In fact, tried, but they didn't pull the trigger. Similarly to what they did versus H2K. Let's see if they follow Vander's advice, actually, and they go for a super late game composition, and they try and just, like, macro it out. Well, they've already switched it up a little bit in picks and bans, recognizing the latent threat that Shen yep. with Chachi provides. They do remove it for the first one. Unicorns are sticking to their guns, and they take Echo off the board. I think this no uh, Shen ban makes so much sense, because even at the later parts of the split, when Unicorns, they had this period where they weren't doing so hot themselves. But then they started playing Shen more often, and suddenly they had these very dense mid games where it essentially became a 4v1, uh, a 4 one split push comp as opposed to 1v1, and Shen would always jump in, and Vizichachi had really good performances. Yeah, especially as we got into playoffs. I mean, it was so crucial to them. Fnatic, they're doubling down here, removing the Kassadin. Last time, remember, they had two jungle bans. Not the case this time around. I think it's worth doing in a best of five, especially when you're a team that has some morale issues. Just ban what you lost versus. So it, at worst case, if you lose again, at least you're losing against new stuff, you yeah. know? So it, you can't say, oh my god. You can't walk away from the series feeling, if only we banned this champion. They're trying right now to uh, force Unicorns to adapt, at least, in pick and match. Absolutely, but you do have to think, what what is Fnatic thinking, being a game down here? Remember, this is a team that, since Season 2, has always made Worlds. They have always placed so high on the world stage. And they're taking away the globals. Yeah, well, the they shot it. can't go from lane to lane. The cast then can't go from lane to lane. And the Tom Kens can't go from lane to lane. So the 1-3-1 one, one, that Unicorns ran, the pillars that built that 1-3-1 one, one, have been smacked down by Fnatic. They're looking at the Vladimir or Sivir first pick, and now Unicorns need to think. Do we ban one, give the other over, or do we just trade it and get the preferential jungle pick with it? For example, Sivir to Fnatic, Vladimir Rek'Sai on the side of Unicorns. Might be the case. We'll see as the final ban comes in. It's the GP. So even less globals available to Fnatic. Yep. What do they want? Do they want the Sivir? Or do, in fact, they want the Rek'Sai? Or the Vladimir. Or the Vladimir. I think it's yeah. more of a question of Vladimir or Sivir here. Yeah, it moved it, moved it just fine on the Gragas, to be honest. Even though in the early game, he I think Fnatic is go Vladimir. That's, that's my gut feeling. Because I feel like Unicorns aren't really going to do too great with the Sivir. Fnatic would like uh, to play Sivir, I think. It would, I think it would fit them stylistically pretty well. Um, it's almost, it's impossible to lose silver lanes too if you have a uh, late pick support. So you can always just push. Yeah, it's true. Um, well, Fnatic, uh, maybe they're laying a little bit of secret messaging in there. I don't know if you yeah. take a look at it. Shen, Cast, and Tom Kench. That's a team they might like to play SKT up in the worlds. But it is the Rek'Sai first pick, so they opted to give that one over to Spirit. Unicorns have a lot of options here. Opt to prove me wrong. Let's see what's gonna happen here. Shen GP off the board, which means. As we dive deeper into the top lane champion pool, which got hit pretty hard in this pick and ban, Gnar obviously goes up in priority. And now Unicorns. That is a, probably a reason why the Vladimir didn't come out, actually, in hindsight, because Ryze is actually a decent matchup into him early, and it's a champion that they play themselves. So maybe Exile is fine. I was like, you know what? Take the Vladimir. If not, I'll wait. Maybe pick it later. And worst case, we'll just match it with the Ryze. Sivir should come out here, though. Yeah. There's a lot of options. They don't have to pick the mid yet, and they definitely don't want to take the jungle since the Rek'Sai was taken away. So the Narsivir, I really like that a lot. It gives Unicorns that ability to form this run at you composition, starting off, and they get it. Two games in a row, in my opinion, Unicorns have a very solid first rotation on purple side. Really can build a good composition with Narsivir. There's plenty of options still available to round it out. Let me see what Fnatic answer with here. <laughs> the Victor Troll. Having a little bit of fun with the mid lane hovers. Yeah, my client is uh, a second ahead on my screen, so I could see the victor from the future. Well, Fnatic still have a lot of time to decide what they want to take. It's only the jungle pickup now, but you know, what are they going to do against the Gnar pickup since the... There's been quite a lot of top lane bans. I want to see what Kekas decides to go for this game, but they don't need it right now. The Lucian would work out well for Reckless. Yeah, I wonder what's left here. Is the Irelia going to come out? Oh, that's an the, option. The good old Trundle top lane, which is uh, oh. a rough one. Okay, so they do lock the Vlad in. Yeah, I mean, it's, expected. it's such a strong pick here. The, the the true conventional counter pick here would be a Malzahar, but it doesn't seem to be a Exile's Alley. He's probably just going to pick that Rise that he likes playing so often. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it. I guess they could just match jungle here if they're just going to play Gragas again. Take a book out of we the... We did see a recent Skarner. The Skarner. <laughs> Don't think it'll happen won, today, though. won the game. It did win the... Well, 
Did it win the game, or did they win the game with it? It participated in the game that was won. Uh, okay, you got me there. <laughs> <laughs> That's about as much as it did. Uh, it impaled a lot of champions. Yep. I mean, with the Civic Comp, I could actually see that being pretty legit. Like, there is no way you're going to get away from that. They are deleting somebody. Especially without Tom Kench available to stop it. They're leaving the jungle as their last pick. Nope, they're deciding right now do we want support. I think it's best to keep support here as, as the last pick to really see what you're up against. What you need to fill that composition out with. Give yourself a good 2v2. Uh, Veritas and Hillisang kind of held their own last time around against Reckless and Yellowstar. Not too shabby in a, in a losing lane matchup. Damn, unicorns are going all out. It's like, do we flex the Karma? Do we go for the Elise? Do we go Karma Rise? Do we put the Karma support already? So many choices. But they end up locking the jungler and have a mid lane flex pick. Karma can survive against the Vladimir matchup. Um, has decent early pressure in a lot of matchups. Um, Mantra shields are incredibly devious, I think is the best way to describe them. Mantra W is one of my favorite spells in the games because it's it's so deceptively strong and sustaining. Yeah, and not to mention if they do end up putting it bot, I mean, that is a really speedy bot lane. But even when they group up together, if it's mid lane, they oh, yeah. have so many ways to just get into Fnatic's face. Honestly, you pick Karma when you're, I think you're afraid of like the enemy picking Trundle and you say, yeah, you can pillar us, but the wave will be pushed in 24 7 that you never get an option to even consider doing that. Like, Karma Sivir has the ultimate lane control. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll see if Spirit decides to try and. Takes a lot of visits down there. He definitely did in the HDK series, and we saw quite a bit of it in the last game as well. Fnatic, their last rotation, three seconds. As the timer what? ticks down, and that's a Yasuo top lane. All right. <laughs> that just happened. Just There's actually an abundance of tank Yasuo players in the top lane in European solo queue. They get like one damage item, and then they go like hybrid tank, and they're just really annoying. There is Trunnel Pillar and Rek'Sai knockup to proc this Yasuo. It, we've seen this matchup once. Who was it? NA played it like... I remember this story being, I think it was Spring Split. Uh, almost like a Dignitas matchup. I don't know. We saw... Or, or Darshan, it's I think. It's been a while. I think Darshan whipped it out once. And he... he they had the Yasuo already as the secret pocket pick counter pick into Nar, I think it was. And then just got smashed anyways. The whole matchup is based around Yasuo filling up his shield and then being able to take the poke from Nar and take the wave. If not, he puts the Windwall. The problem is Windwall has such a long cooldown that you don't... You only have one wall every like 20 odd seconds and R can yeah. just keep boomeranging you in the face. That's if risky. If you ever fall behind in this matchup, it is FF20. Oh, that's risky. Okay, Fnatic, they're laying it out on the line here. That's a lot of damage though if they can get it up. But they're gonna be able to do a lot. Pushed, I think, in... Unless Kikis can get the perma push here with jungle pressure, Fnatic uh, will definitely get pushed in the bot lane. Mm -hmm. Mid lane Vladimir early should be okay, but then once Ryze gets access to these waves, we're gonna see if he can get the shove. Gotta see how these jungles go. Yeah, this is gonna be a really, really interesting lane matchup and, and just across the board. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of explosive fights. I said it last game, but of yep. course it's gonna be true against it's Fnatic, it's Unicorns. Who do you guys at home think is gonna be the winner in game number two? Can Fnatic with a top lane Yasuo? Of course it's Kickus is playing it. Hashtag FNC when at LOL Esports is the place. Or if you think the Unicorn Magic is still there after game number one, hashtag UOL win. We are gonna find out. We're loading onto the rift. And I can't wait to see how it all goes down. Well, you don't have to wait very long. Right on cue. Teams are ready to storm out of the base here. They got locked. The gates are open. Because they get put into the baby cage for like first uh, 10, 15 seconds of the game. And then you can rush out. Mm -hmm. Speaking of rushing, never get tired of seeing that rise run. Inspires me. Do more, uh, do more laps around my hometown. And, yep. uh, around my neighborhood, that is. So Exile, we talked about this rise. Around the I run around town. the neighborhood. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't, I'm actually that in shape. No, definitely not. <laughs> But uh, Exile has played this rise. Yeah. He has definitely made a point of it. It's been banned against him on several occasions. I want to see what he makes of it this time because there were definitely some stellar moves the last time we saw it come out. We see our first duel. Yeah, Kikis is already there. Moves coming in. Surprise, 2v1. Unlucky. Ooh, he's low. He's going to walk away. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a bit. Oh, he's dying here, Pyra. <gasps> yeah. Oh, Spirit. He's okay. fast. Close, dude. Oh, yellow Four stars duel. there. Uh, but this is this is obviously in yellow stars' favor, or Hilo Sang's favor, rather, because he has uh, spell thieves, talking that gold straight to the bank. Keep getting it. Yeah, it's really important for, for like there's actually a reason these guys are fighting. Um, because Lucian Trundle, while they can do Krugs, if they get poked off, they can get proxied like not proxied in the traditional sense. They can get farmed or zoned off farm while Karma Sivir zone them level one. This is actually if Hilo Sang plays this right, Reckless and Yellow Star may not get any CS in lane. Like, does he still have his ward available? He does. So this is super dangerous. They need to let the waves meet. 
and then zone them off after the leash here. Like, Hillsang now has to play the equivalent of a goalkeeper. This is really greedy from Fnatic to have a losing bot lane and have them leash and give Sivir early access to the wave. The only caveat here is if Veritas over pushes, okay, he's putting the range one low so he can decide if he wants to push or not. Kind of hit them too much though. So I think Fnatic's happy here. Look at them. There's only th f f uh, four creeps remaining. They're all OHP. They're going to get all these creeps to them for free. So this is Unicorns gifting the lane over to, to Reckless and Yellowstar because they can actually get experience. Like if Veritas and Hillsang play this more conservatively, they could have honestly punished Fnatic more. That obviously comes at the risk of getting ganked. But still, I think they're honestly over pushing a tad. But now that the interesting phase is over, it's up to Yellowstar and Fnatic to farm AFK on the tower and get as much CS as they possibly can. Oh. Starting to grab a little bit back, but of course there is that lead from the beginning of it all. Had to keep an eye on this mid lane matchup and see how Febivin fares against the rise of Exile. So far, so decent. Vladimir, we already we've seen quite a bit of him in lane. We know how he functions these days. Yeah, uh, definitely want to move up top at some point, but that that will be an interesting matchup too. Yeah, Vladimir in any early game matchup is just about can he get the push early by by getting those empowered cues on the right timing. Uh, but he's being challenged, obviously, Rise is a good pusher. Look at Exile here, basing nearly on uh, 14 creeps. Sitting on a little gold. Coming back with that tier, obviously. So he gets a really good base. Uh, not running Teleport, but he's doing the equivalent of like what Teleport Mages do. It just insta-shoves until level 3. Bases gets tier, maybe hits a few CS down. So it's a good start here, pushing bot, pushing mid. For the Unicorns. Oh, it's already looking like a better early game for him than it was the last time. Of course, it didn't really hold them up too much. Scaling composition a little bit different. And yeah, and if you look at, at Hillisang and Veritas too, like they can comfortably push here because um, they're not threatened by the by the ganks. Because one, Reckless and Yellowstar are so low that they can probably survive. Two, they have um, their jungler with Scuttle Crab is taken down, so they're covered in the river, which means they can move their Trinket Ward instead of in the bush right next to the lane. They can move it to enemy Thrive Bush, so there is no real tunnel path that Spirit can take, unless he really goes from behind them. But then he would be spotted by move. So they're actually like three for three in gang protection. Which means, now the Unicorns need to tell their top laner, well, Rek'Sai is definitely not ganking bot lane. The only lane he can be is top. Yep, sends a Prey Seeker, Chachi knows what's up. Uh, he's not in too much danger though, fortunately. He had taken a uh, fortuitous hop that direction. Very dead even on this farm though too, and Chachi just hasn't seemed to have too much trouble in the early game. Move is actually coming up top side. He'll be matching Spirit, still trying to take his jungle away. Spirit's got to be careful here, though. Move's coming and Chachi's collapsing. This might mean a flash the tunnel. No. No, you can tunnel Okay, out. no, he doubles network built up. He's good. Um, but that's move on a different jungle. Faster pacing on the Elise. Very sustained, too, which means he can uh, get a lot more experience here. And if he can challenge his own Crux, Crux rather, he wastes Spirit's time. So he's actually one pulling ahead. He needs to leverage that into a gank sometime. But it's super hard for Elise to gank pushing lanes. He can hover around and help them. Tell them, you know what, you're safe and we can counter gank. However, the only lane he can truly show up is top, but uh, as we see in the river, plenty of wards. Okay, Veritas got stopped up by the pillar, but he punished Yellowstar quite heavily there. Low health bars on both him and Reckless. Because they can never commit. They can never chase on that pillar because they will run. Their minion wave's already half dead by the time that pillar comes out. If they chase the trade, they will be fighting six creeps versus zero, which means you lose that trade. Mm -hmm. the same way right here, Exile, he gets poked, but he can't commit to that trade anymore because if Evan fires back, Exile stands still, he's going to eat minion damage. And Reckless... Has to do his best. 90 CS down right now is okay, but at one point the potions were out. Look at Yellowstar. Zero pots. Look at the Sang right now. And look at the CS Couple difference. more. He still has two potions left himself, so. Yeah, this Silver Karma lane is already starting to wreak some havoc on Reckless and Yellowstar. You can see Spirit coming down bottom side, though, and there is no more Skull Crab vision. This could be dangerous. Veritas, he moved forward. There's a flash chomp from Yellowstar. That is going to give the game up. Instant exhaust down. Spell shields on the Prey Seeker. They turn their attention to Hillisang. He's got a flash over the pillars there. Exhaust on him. That's going to be first blood. It's over to Reckless now, and Spirit's a little bit low, but can he get out of town? Move has come in to try and relieve this one. Double TPs. Spirit's gone down. Move takes him out. Move a little low, and Yellowstar as well. Reckless takes down Move, and it is a big part in the bot lane, but Reckless is going to fall. A double kill over to Chachi. Uh, good attempt by Fnatic, but minor misplays that leading to the Unicorns actually pulling ahead. We'll tell you later why. Let's see if they can just push in. Yes, you always focus the AD carry. This play started by Yellowstar going for his traditional kind of let's flash on the enemy AD carry, slow him down. Veritas had no flash available. His spell shield ran out, and Spirit did not want to flash for the couple of inches here. Look at the start here. They could have went for Healer Sang, which is fine, but if you commit and burn enemy, uh, spell Shield, you can't Unbarrow here, but you should just flash Unbarrow if you're Spirit. Like, you should literally just go onto Veritas, because then the pillar will block Veritas, and the reason you do that is if somehow this becomes an extended exchange, Karma would be alive and not the Sivir, because this Sivir is dealing out 
tons of damage here. Yes, this is a sloppy flash from Move. The second proc of the Reckless Passive kills him as he flashes out. But now, Veritas is being untouched, and he's like literally killing everybody one by one. And this is miscommunication by Fnatic. They went on a target with Flash, while Sivir literally just flashed in front of them. Spellship was down. There was no escape. Knockup into Pillar is a guaranteed kill on the enemy AD carry. Always focus AD carry if you can. And now Kickus is chased away from his own tower here. Seven minutes in, the Unicorn Ooh. trying to move it forward. They should We've be able to this get before. themselves this first tower gold. Yeah, this is a little bit of a throwback here on 615, but look at going in the Unicorn's favor. They get themselves first tower blood. Fnatic are way far behind because with Because this goes back to the earlier play. If you end a play on a push, which means the enemy minions are in the enemy turret, or, uh, or like your minions are in the enemy turret, you get to base and you're quicker on the play. You base first, you run out, you go to top lane. They have to push out the lane once they come back and you get first brick here. And right now we see a Herald trade for Dragon, and honestly, while it is an Infernal, Rift Herald is not to be underestimated, especially not in a swingy matchup like Yasuo versus Nar. Oh, absolutely, and in Chachi's hands too, has already given Kekas a little bit of trouble, so that first Dragon goes over to Fnatic, that is important. But as you said, the Rift Herald picked up by Visit Chachi now. They've got themselves quite a lot of power to work with to start pushing on the sides. And last time, Unicorns gave Fnatic a hell of a fight in a 1-3-1 situation. They could possibly do it again here. Yeah, Fnatic didn't even finish the bot lane turret. That is the most important part of this. So Hillisang and Veritas are right now, they're safe in this bot lane. They can control the wave however they want. And it's so much easier to play with the turret behind you. Um, the only guy playing on the long lane right now is Kikis, but he's suffering against Vizichachi. Look at the vision that they've left too. Two pink wards. These things last forever here for the unicorns. Oh yeah, they've got that entire jungle Basically, lit up right it's, now. Basically, it's it's a get out of gang for free card, you know. But I know Kikis clears one, but the other one, if, if Rek'Sai passes by at any time, he's spotted and he's giving away his information. And once you have the information on the jungler, you know roughly for the next 30 to 40 seconds what's going to happen in the game. And that's enough. If he's left side, you know he can play aggro right side. If he's not left side, guess what? He's probably on the right side. So these wards, these deep wards give you so much information. Unicorns able to use that information to keep themselves nice and safe here. It's like a mental Pass trigger. Right if you're a bot lane that's double poke, double ranged, and you see jungle on the other side of the map, you just get happy. You can just play. I call it like playing like a donkey. Like you can literally play on the enemy turret because it's uh, gonna punish you. Clinical term, right? Yeah. Yeah, this tower's already down to half its health. Reckless is gonna be able to clear some of this away, but nonetheless, Veritas and Hillsang are having a grand old time of it. Start right. things off. No uh, ults available on the supports just yet, but and a play that is possible right now for unicorns is. Blue buff over to Exile, have him push mid, then path down with move, have Busy Chachi teleport down later, and go for kind of a, a bot lane fiesta with five people. And take that turret down. Yeah, it's on already. So we're getting close on to 10 minutes here. Move is heading towards Spirit. Should find him out in the jungle, and at the very least, find himself pink. And Exile is in some trouble, but Move tags his way right back on in. They turn their attention over to Febivin as he comes up out of his pool. A little bit of damage, not too much more. Exile saved his flash. Hangs on to those summoners. He does use the ghost. He does use the ghost. Trades it for a lot of damage, though. So that play pattern that we were talking about earlier, the potential roam down bot. If you watch it for a little bit. Fnatic like bot lane. free damage in Yellow Star here, too. Yeah, but they hit level 6, which is they they have uh, all-in pressure. Trundle pre-6 is not so fun to play, but at level 6, there's always a looming threat of pillar into just sheer damage all-in. Right oh, now, ooh, nice combo. Spirit. Spirit is taking really low in this one, but Febivin has got his back, and Exile has got moves. They've talked him in Rude Prison for a sec. In goes Reckless onto Hillisang, spends a full channel of Coaling. Yellow Star, that would be enough damage, but the flash last second, uh, followed by Yellow Star. Oh, double on Hillisang! Oh, he's trying, but the chomp is too real. Now Exile, let's see if he can catch him on this one. Throws him in the prison for just a second, and Veritas, they surround. Yellow Star knows he chased too deep, and Veritas picks up a kill. Yeah, well, I wonder why that ultimate wasn't triggered earlier on Hillisang, so he would die from the bleed. Would prevent. Yeah, I'll start from flashing over, but he, he had to go for it. It's the rule of the support. If you can get a flash one for one, you take it. Gotta establish dominance. It does leave Reckless with access to this wave. But overall, Hillsang overstaying is welcome. Just a tad, still level five. Like right here, the all just just ulti, you know, get the dot damage. So when this guy flashes, he's dead. So because he didn't ulti, he had to flash, he, he had, had to flash, had to exhaust. This is two summers that you can trade for, you just your ultimate. Yeah, and he didn't have to die there either. Yeah, and your life. But the summoners, Pyra. Yeah, no, summoners think important, of the man. pillar. Think they take the a lot longer pillar. to come back up than you do. Yeah. Like you're up yeah. in like 20 seconds, these things, these flashes, they're precious. Yep. Like diamonds. Well, you know all about that one. 
<laughs> I was diamond. <laughs> I was screw you, Pyro. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, man. It's a few more divisions higher than me. Down on the bottom side, Veritas is going to finish up the tower. Unicorns have got themselves a nice little gold lead, but you know they've definitely got to work at keeping the lead for themselves. There is another Infernal when the next yep. Dragon comes back up, and look at the map control they've got right now. This is looking really good for them. Yeah, they're, they're kind of playing oh. handoff. There's a little bit of an all-in. Chachi. Up and out. Chachi's uh, hanging with this one. He does not spend the flash away. Yep, there's Ooh, the hop. That's what you got to do. Hop away as he dashes in. So Chachi has the control. Unicorns, they're leveraging their push pressure. It's something they uh, Fnatic was doing in the last game. Here they're doing themselves. They push in mid. Then they kind of tag team together into enemy jungle, drop some wards. Look again, you know, three wards in Spirit's jungle. It's so hard for him to surprise because they constantly have that information of the deep vision. West Fnatic, they're playing in the dark. Yes, he can cancel him a couple of times, but sometimes a shot in the dark is better than none. Yeah, look at the vision. Like, I might like Fnatic doesn't see much right now. If you can get a vision toggle of like Fnatic's vision, they have so little to work with. Yeah, compared to the unicorns who've got the entire bottom jungle surrounding the dragon pit right now, there's Fnatic's vision on the map. It's completely dark. Yeah, it's so hard. Like, Even in the river. Where's this jungler? Like, you have no clue whatsoever. Like, is he doing you Raptor? You anyone. Is he doing race right now? Is he doing wolves? Like, he could, he could go from base to left or right, and that could indicate how you have to play. Whereas right now, Unicorns of Love, with a certainty, know that Spirit's not on the right side of the map currently. So he's either left side or in base, and he has to reveal himself. And it's those little things. These pro teams, they can extrapolate so much information of that. That's why deep ports are so valuable. And this is just, this is a level of macro play that Unicorns have been able to put out this series that we're just not used to seeing from them. It's a little bit, when you're already it's kind still of ahead, fundamental. it's still fundamental, but we haven't seen it from this team yeah. historically. And it's nice to see this change. This could mean the difference between, you know, moving on or not. They're one game up, they're looking for more here, but Unicorns, they're just looking like the stronger team as Yellowstar finds himself CC chained. CC chained, but where is Kikis? Like, is Fnatic going to turn this into, you can play Kikis is moved down from top lane to challenge and contest this dragon. However, in the setup, because of lack of vision, Fnatic has to face check not for the objective. They have to face check for the vision of the objective. Kikis ran down, and Fnatic, they were going to brute force a 5v4, 5v3. But Yellowstar ate the poke right now. They have to yield because the Unicorns of Love, because they had to control the map, they don't have to goop up for the objective. They can keep their split push on the side lane. And look at it. Vizichachi with the Herald buff is leveraging that push. He's forcing Kikis to go back. Because Yellowstar got poked, Unicorns are going to get both their cakes and eat them too. Yep, unless Spear can pull off himself. A miracle oh. steal. Nothing doing that time. Infernal Drake goes over to Unicorns. They even it up. Chachi is still pushing on the top side, dodging out the tornadoes from Kikis. Yeah, and this is this is all on the back of vision. And people always like they underestimate what it gives you, because it gives you time. Whereas Fnatic could walk up and contest you on Dragon if they had the wards, they now have to contest every single brush. There's like a paranoia in them, like, like every step you take, every move you make, karma could be queuing you. And that is exactly Not a good what happened to Yellowstar. Yeah, Fnatic have been having to play with very limited information. It's making it very tough for this team. And you know, as we mentioned at the start of the game, it is a team that is already prone to nerves when you're down one game and now you're not able to do what you want to in game number two. This is the kind of thing that can cause tilt. Yeah, and engage. And look at the Hillestang. Double sweep, get the edge of this next brush to get a slightly uh, a, ba a, a tier one ward, it's kind of called. You know, first ward in the enemy jungle. Once that's safe, you go for the next one after you push. But uh, Protocol 131 is engaged once again. Now it's Rise on the side lane. It's in a similar boat as Talia in the last game, where no, the Rise can't teleport in, but he has Ghost, and he has his ultimate later on to join fights. Yeah, and that, that ward that Yellowstar was able to put in is like the first they've gotten in the Unicorn's jungle in a long time. Now Febivin is dueling it out yeah. with Veritas in the middle. Good spell shield. Yeah, there's a good spell shield. Two level difference. Gotta be careful on Veritas' side. But Chachi, he's still doing work, and he does put away the tower while Fnatic will only finish off their first in the bottom. That's the difference this game has been all already. Yeah. Unicorns, they can't quite play around topside yet because Baron uh, is yet to spawn. So Exile needs to hold here. Yeah, like not succumb to the, to the pressure. But Exile is almost, uh, or Visit Chachi rather, is so comfortable. You know what? You take one down, pass the gold around, and you go to the next tower. Yeah. He's doing a lot of damage, a lot of work with the Rift Herald buff. It certainly paid out dividends for him. Febivin will finally find that second pink ward, but Unicorns have already done what they needed to do yeah. up in this side of the map as they had knocked down the second tier turret. They've lost their deep vision right now. So the map has kind of reset, despite being 3,000 gold down. Fnatic also put their three-man squad in the mid lane. They have good side laners with the Yasuo and, and the Vladimir, but they're not as in, in a dominant position as Unicorns due to that gold deficit. Yeah, matched on dragons as well. There'll be a mountain drake coming up next that can help turn the the tide in case of Baron. Yep. 
Just about every time, Exile will find a Pink Ward in the Tri Brush here and clear that one away since he has free time on it. Unicorn on the bottom side looking to reestablish their vision control, but it's Hillisang who finds himself by himself and he inspires his way out of danger for now. We'll see if Unicorns could keep this map pressure up, kind of holding a line and shoving into Fnatic territory. Uh, definitely like the way the Unicorns have been using their Pink Wards throughout both games, honestly. It's the foundation of the vision because they last indefinitely and honestly you just need, because you're not, you don't have access to infinite amount of wards right now. Eel Sang trying to protect his brush, but he's kind of cornered here. Good zoning by Veritas. He steps forward, spell shield puts too. the aggro on Febivan to, to make sure that his support's not getting cornered in the brush. It's a fight for, it's ward wards right now. Oh, we've seen several of those. Uh, Spirit is pulled the trigger onto Hill Sang. The tether's still there. They've stopped him, but Yellow Star's at his back. Don't mind me, just nah. take my Rek'Sai for a walk yeah. on the leash. Uh, Spirit's gonna have to back off out of that one. They do want to grab themselves control. You can see Exile still happily farming away on the jungle, or on the bottom side, rather, as Chachi takes away the blue buff. So we'll have to see how it all goes down. Unicorns, I mean, one game up here, it's a best of five, but if this keeps trending this way, Unicorns, they could be one game away from facing off against Splice and you know, for Fnatic, what a crazy thing that would be to yeah. not make Worlds after so many successful years in a row. So many, like, per good performances too, you know. They had two semi-finals, they, they've earned a World Championship. Historically, this Fnatic organization is one of the, honestly, one of the best, if not the best in Europe, with the most achievements here. They, they can even exit the season with their uh, head held up high. You know, it's same what the desk said, Mithy said it too. We can't, we can Criticize his play for Yellowstar, but we still have to respect what he's achieved over all this time compared to the players that are on the desk that are hoping to get honestly as storied careers. But still for Fnatic, this has to feel bad because they come in game one, they lose in the fashion that they did where they didn't pull the trigger. Right now, they have the Yasuo pocket pick that comes out. It completely falls flat the same way it has done in the past because it works in scrims because everybody plays hyper aggro. But Unicorns, much more controlled. This is not the bloody fanatic Unicorns of Love series that we're used to seeing throughout history. It was like something like 30% bloodier than most average elite games yeah. whenever Fnatic faced off against Unicorns. However, this is the complete opposite. Crazy last minute next defenses. I yeah. Mean, yeah, Unicorns were able to control it towards the later stage, or towards the mid and later stages of the game in game one. Unicorns are holding this lead. They're not jumping the gun. They're not pulling too far ahead. And I mean, this is the kind of team that you would look at to make worlds. I mean, or being contention at least. Like, yeah. This this style they're is still just, splice, of course. They're still splice, and it's going to be an uphill battle. But unicorns, they failed last year. They went down 0-3 versus Origin in the final round of the gauntlet, and they're looking for redemption or at least make it there. But right now, they need to stay alive. Oh, they do! Exile body blocking. It won't be enough. Reckless takes him down and sneaks away. That's going to be one quick kill. Fnatic. Speaking of redemption, they're looking for it themselves, oh. and still a goal deficit. But they have bought themselves some time. 18 seconds until Hillsang comes back on the board. There's a dragon and Baron spawning pretty soon. Yeah, good pick off here. So they're looking to maybe lose an objective, but they have Vizichachi with push pressure in the bot lane. Oh, they caught Spirit. Yeah, decent damage on Spirit here. Chachi. No Narbar. To get out. Really good hop again. He might have to burn his flash in this one, but look at the damage he's putting out on Spirit right now. No fear as he is baiting all of Fnatic away. Finally has to burn his flash, and the rest of Unicorns start to turn towards mid. Really controlled aggression by Vizichachi. He actually knows the limits of this champion very well. Similar to how earlier, whenever Yasuo dashed in, he would just jump at the right frame here. There was no jump cancel with the pillar from Yellowstar. The pillar was a little late, which means Spirit took so much damage, and Unicorns of Love have correctly fenced off this initial attempt for Fnatic to control the objective because Karma's back right now. Mid lane's being sieged, cooldowns have been used, and now it's Unicorns in control again. Yeah, and they take a few more chip shots on the tower. And they're sending their top laner to top, which and is so almost anti-Unicorns. He needs to fill up his uh, rage bar, though, because else he's just going to arrive in Mininar. Still, Spirit could come in for the steal. This is a bit risky here with the Mountain Drake. Teleport comes in. Back away from it right now. They need the teleport. It's going to be spent. Fnatic knows they're in trouble. Febivin, he finds Chachi in the brush here. Febivin going low, but he's on a Vlad. Going to pull in Hemoplague on Kikis. Turning to Chachi, who's soon to be Meganar. But will it be there in time? Exhaust. Move takes out Kikis. And now the rest of Fnatic oh, is scrambling to try and get a kill. Move is backed away. Exile takes down Reckless. Fnatic are all falling. And it's only Febivin. Make that no one. Double kill a Reckless. And that's the ace. Oh, Fnatic got completely sucked in. Hillisang stepped forward, did a beautiful Mantra Shield on all the members on his team. Fnatic tried to chase that one kill, but as he got sick, sucked in, time kept ticking, and the Rage Bar on the Nard kept filling up, and they didn't manage to take Vizichach down. And what happened there is that Sivir was alive, untouched, ricochet boomerang on multiple members. This is a major falter here for Fnatic. Look at it again. They have their eyes set on a single target. 
Nar comes into the fray. They back off too far. They have the wind wall to zone, and they go in. Look, they're going to go into the funnel. Chase Vizichachi. Hillsang follows them in here to peel. And look at Veritas. He enters the fight from the backside. There's Mega Nar, untouched, untouched, untouched. He is simply cleaning up, uncontested as Sivir, because Fnatic, they just they just went into a choke point versus an impending Mega Nar, and that is a major team fighting mistake. And Veritas, yet again, just like we saw last game, not touching these big fights because Fnatic could not get the focus on. As a result, Unicorns clean up. They didn't even need Smite to take themselves yeah. to Baron, and now they will have it to take themselves. Mountain Drake, things are looking grim for this Fnatic team. In a, in a crucial Baron fight, however, last game, he was the one jumping in to create some more space for Exile to do the damage. And again, Exile dealing so much damage while, while our eyes are always on Veritas. The damage numbers just show Exile going off here. He's always in the center. But the this damage just came out, and this, it's all on Vizichachi's Gnar ulti there. Yeah. It was, we all saw it coming. Fnatic probably saw it coming too. They were just trying to get him down in time, but it just wasn't enough. I mean, Kick is dashed in there, but uh, the problem with the Oswald pocket pick is uh, there's counter. It's called Exhaust. Yeah. And more important, it's actually, Exhaust is really strong against Yasuo. Hopefully Vizichachi survives so we can tell the story. Might do, no flash, but they've got the tower, and now they find Spirit, the tether's on. They wanted to take him for a walk, but they might have to stop him in his tracks. Chachi leading the line as they caught Fevivin and stunned him up. He's gonna have to pull a big Nard to knock Reckless and Yellowstar back into the team. It's going to be Veritas going down. Shutdown gold over to the Vladimir, but it may be too late for the rest of Fnatic. A double kill to Veritas, and they are inside the base. Yeah. Backing off, waiting for the minion wave. Two for two here. They're going to Fountain here, so Unicorns of Love get access to the turret, but the inhibitor may not fall because there's only one real threat remaining here on Exile, and they're looking to take the Rise Express out. All right, so that was a slight overchase. They didn't turn on the onto Fevin. Vizichachi was looking for more instead of just solidifying Fevin into the wall. Reckless stepped up in that fight, did a lot of damage. This is how it starts. Again, overreaching. Spirit stuck behind the pillar of his own support. Wind wall helps. Right here is honestly where you just turn on Fevin if you're Vizichachi or you ulti the backline out. You play appealing now. He made the mistake of trying to go for the next kill. Like he went for dessert when lunch wasn't finished, you know? That's not what you can do. You need to leave some time for yeah. that dessert. And then and back there's no way you can count your calories at that point either. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately. It gets, it gets messy, you know. Yeah. Stretchy, it goes wrong. Suddenly your, your clothes don't fit anymore. Yeah. Well, that, that's this game in the nutshell right now. Unicorns, they find themselves 8,000 gold up. It's a dragon advantage on top of it. And there's still Baron buff ticking here for Unicorns. A bear inhibitor down bottom lane. They have a lot of options. Yep. And honestly, to, to touch on that exhaust point that you mentioned, the, the cool reason why exhaust is really good against, against Yasuo is because when he does his ulti animation, he hangs in the air, it's like slicing his blades, the damage comes at the end of the animation. It's so easy to exhaust Yasuo ult because you can wait right before he's like done like doing his little dance in the air and then you exhaust him and suddenly his ulti does way less. And the majority of the effect is also the armor pen that he gets from doing that ulti. If he's then slowed down, does less damage himself, is just a super efficient exhaust, so you should always wait for him at, to be at the end of the animation. Yeah, and there's a decent bit of armor too between Chachi and Move to yep. you know try and defend and play against it. This pocket pick has just not worked out well for Kikas. You can see it in every facet of the Unicorns play this time around. Now they siege on two fronts and they've sent Chachi down to the bottom side. Veritas with a very quick spell shield. Reckless is going to try to make something out of thin air. Can he pull the magic out of his hat? But in comes the teleport from Chachi and Fnatic are struggling to get back to their own base. Spirit is caught up. He's going to have to burn his flash. And Chachi goes on in and they turn over to Febivin. Pools on, but will it be a Enough to get away it is. Reckless exhausted. Even more damage they find. And Kikis does take out Chachi. That is a one for none trade for Fnatic, but they may lose more here. Yeah, they may lose more here. Good will win ball to buy some times. Trading one for zero, but still getting a turret is something that makes the Unicorns happy. They need to be careful on the back end there. There was slight hesitation on that initial play too from Fnatic, I feel. I feel that could have pulled the trigger much faster on the chase here. So they're definitely a lot more disjointed than they were in compared to like early game, game one. Unicorns, however, working as a team. He's actually not afraid to go in on the Mega Nar, even if it costs him his life. I think that's still a worth trade. Oh, yeah. Especially if Fnatic can't get anything off yeah. of this right now. I mean, they've got one tower. Maybe they can pick up one answer, but that's and not that's, much. That's the gate point. Like, look right here. Reckless gets uh, a couple of procs here. Is Spirit going to in? Is he holding? No, they're, they're all walking forward. So the, the point of the hesitation on Fnatic was wrong. No, and void. All right, now, is there any major mistakes? No, there's good boomerang. Or good... Uh, Yasuo Q that comes out here, Fevin stuck, he goes very low into pool. Very low in spirit, very, very low in Vizichachi, but then you don't need to kill the members. Killing them sends them to base for like 20, 30 seconds. Just chunking them sends them to base for like 15 seconds, which is enough for you to get access to the turret, the objective. That's what you're playing for if you're unicorns. 
objective based League of Legends, eight turrets to one. That is almost unheard of in this matchup. Look at the top tier one is still alive. Yeah, they've come a long way, these pink power ponies. Unicorns looking to take game number two here, put themselves within arm's reach of Splice and the regional qualifier finals tomorrow. 27 minutes on this clock, and well, it may not have been the bloodbath, but there's still been a, quite a lot of kills on either side. Yeah. Unicorns aren't afraid to pull the trigger, but they have stacked the deck in their favor. And we haven't really talked about builds at all in these two games. Uh, it's really good to see Veritas pick up Executioner's Calling here. Really cheap item and much benefit into the healing that comes out of Febivan. Mm -hmm. We saw the Gnar on the traditional two item power spike really get off and then add the random ones to that, you know, get a little more tanky side lane pressure. So they're really optimizing their builds. Move as well. Getting some of the extra uh -oh. AP damage in there. Throw the belt at least. Not afraid to assassinate anyone. Yeah. Move's not had a bad game either. I mean, it's, it's worth noting that this was pegged as a big weakness of Unicorns is, is Move's performance overall. And in game one, yes, he was shut down early, but he did his job. This game, he has done exactly what he has needed to. Yeah, but one of my main critiques for Spirit has always been that he doesn't play in unison with his team. Jungle support synergy has almost been non-existent on Fnatic throughout the entirety of last, the last year, honestly. It, it was the same thing when he was on World Elite. Yeah. You know, or uh, WE before he re did the, the rename. But, I mean, that's, that's how Spirit has been since he's left Korea. And it has kind of bitten him a couple of times and now we're seeing but he's a really good again. pacing joint so he's really good when he when he get like when you allow him to do what he wants to do which is farm and then create a massive lead he's a fantastic jungler but when the game becomes more team based you need to work together to get that, to get that vision and i think that's what unicorns have done more they've always worked as a team and but i did it really well in the start of game one we can't understate that like the way they shut that move he was left with no options trashy weighed in uh spice's jungler on twitter too he's like move could not have played that better so move ended up two levels down and he could not have played that better, which means Fnatic did the perfect job in, in time in terms of jungle mid synergy. But right now they're they're looking for an answer to kind of fight this honestly suffocating map control from unicorns is the best way to describe it. Look at all the vision at enemy red. So like by power of elimination, they know exactly where Fnatic is right now. Yep, spends one blue trinket. That's going to be for a little while the last one that Fnatic do have. It'll come off cooldown pretty easily, uh, they but they haven't cleared, cleared it though. away. <laughs> so you always need a ward and pit. Like it's so hard to do the and right now. You can tell that there's a ward in pit by how they approach the brushes. If they're too careful and they're kind of fake baiting you, you, you gotta be like, guys, did we check pit? And that's what they're gonna do right now. Cause like, there's, they're like, oh, there's no way they're acting like this or they were going for a cheeky start. Speaking of cheeky start. Oh, with the jungler in mid, this is actually a really nice play here. Two manning Leaping. here. Yeah. Two manning here. And there's a quick flash burn by move to get out of harm's way. This might have been a little too hypey as a teleport comes in. That's gonna be the cancellation from Unicorns. Started that one off, but Fnatic did call their bluff. And Let's move is him. out of summoner because of it. Yeah, I mean, you can you can show the jungler. You don't have to put him into the enemy's face, though. Right now, this is actually going. Okay, he's got oh. Megan They get the stop off, and now Chachi's gonna have to burn his own flash. Unicorns scrambling a little bit here, but Exile exhausted still, pumping out machine gun damage if he Ooh. can. And there we go. It's gonna be Move coming in. Reckless and Yellow Star. They separate with the pillar. Move is gonna be taken down. Chachi, no, the summoner heal keeps him alive. And Febivin is isolated from his team, and he's gone down. Veritas on the return of the boomerang. Exile looking for the chase here. He's got no flash, but he puts Spirit in Rune Prison for a few seconds. He's gonna go down his exile. Gonna stay alive. It doesn't look like it, but kick is oh so low. Unicorns trade two for two on that. Two for two overall. We saw Vizjachi go to base and teleport back in. He's coming on the back end of this fight. He's got his eyes set on Reckless and he turns to Yellow Star. He should have him. There's no way Trundle's getting away and that's Unicorns. Are they gonna opt for Baron? It looks like it. Yeah, they're gonna opt for Baron at least. Deny the vision here. They know that it's completely dark. Remember, this fight started because Fnatic was fighting for vision means that vision is still gone. There's no jungle here. Move is spawning in three seconds. Kik is going for the hero play. Reckless spawns Krux. And you know, everybody's gonna take down the Baron. Not in time to arrive here. Unicorns, surprised with the teleport from Visit Chachi. Fnatic was happy that they traded two for two, but then the super good flying TP from Visit Chachi came in. All right, yeah. this is a super complicated fight. Uh, the concept that we could track in this fight is how people move in at the side of a fight and then move back out. I think a couple of players did that really well. We have Exile doing it okay at the start. He will fail his flash right now and go into the wall, which is a little bit unlucky. Veritas gets zoned off right now. Febivin is going to walk up and flash over the wall, and he really forces the backline from Unicorn's back, but they really good heal on Vizichachi keeps him alive. And this is Veritas then stepping forward because he knows Exile was drawing the aggro, so the, the switcheroo of aggro was done really well. Now Spirit goes in, Exile draws a three-man squad down towards him, and Spirit feels backline. But the fact that Veritas got the heal off on Chachi earlier was really important. Guess who's showing up right now? It's Nar. 
with an old Monar bar, but he can still just put Yellow Star in a bind, and that's enough for Unicorns to win this fight. So even with a fail flash of Exile, they really played the outskirts of the fight very well. Uh, major props to Febrin to really controlling the, the center of the fight too with a good flash, but they were just too far behind. And look at how crucial Unicorn's control this game has proven. I mean, you saw that for a second Fnatic thought about chasing on Exile, but he went back to tower. That's a first tier turret, almost full yeah. health at 32 minutes. Fnatic have only gotten the one. Yep. Yeah, they secured that one early dragon and it's definitely keeping them alive here, but like, 32 minutes in, they got one tower. They have 10 kills to 14, that looks okay, but they're down over 10,000 gold. This is a massive deficit. Yeah, and that's why this fight that was played honestly so well by Fnatic, like that Vladimir flashing in like that, it should be, that's a dead chachi of the golds even. The problem is, because they're so far behind, and Exile had the safety of his turret, they could drag out that fight right now. It looks like uh, the inhibitor won't be dragged out. That's taken out by Unicorns. They're going to start trying to clean up. Remember, there is no inhib turret down on the bottom side, so they don't even need a mini wave to take this one. Fnatic are scrambling to try and push them off, but it is way too late. It's already gone. Unicorns swing for two, and they grab them 32 and a half minutes in. They're looking to start closing this one out. Yeah, and now it's not of a matter whether Unicorns finish. It's just the fashion in which they choose to do so. Are they going to go for the ultra safe five man group? Or maybe peel off Vizichachi, put him in the mid lane, have him push in a little bit? Well, there's a pretty good reason a lot of the community was looking at Unicorn saying they are looking stronger than Fnatic in their current form. But if they go 2 0 up over this one, it's going to be really, really hard for Fnatic to come right on back. You need to get your mental in shape. They need a pillar into Yasuo ulti on two key players here. So if they can get Ryze and Sivir magically together and Yellow Star pillars them and then Kiki expresses R, maybe, maybe Fnatic can win. And that is a very good win condition. Uh, last inhib tower. Getting chunked a little bit. There's still one cannon creep. Powered. Yeah, this is why it's better to split push because you can push in mid and bot. Like right now, Unicorns are just waiting. They're waiting for this cannon to do its job one shot at a time, and they're waiting for mid lane and bot lane to arrive. If you look over, the waves are stacking. So the only way Fnatic wins if they pull the trigger before that, or if Unicorns overextend. If the Unicorns take a patient approach, this game will end. Yeah, Chachi, he knows, he holds on and hops. May not be this exact way, but look at how low that is. Just a couple more shots would be all they need. The wind wall is gonna fade. Like, this is it for Fnatic. And there it goes. Off. Because they have to catch the waves. If they waited one more wave and Unicorns didn't buy back, would have been all over right now. That's so three hips. Yeah, three hips down. Five man pillar, but no Yasuo near. Well, we've seen this one before. Unicorns in game number one. Had a rough time in the early game, but they were able to scale back on up. And now they are the ones fighting out Fnatic inside of their own base. Hemo Plague on to three, but it may not even matter. Flashes for Feb of Chachi going deep. Double tower damage, but he has sacrificed himself for the cause. And Kikis gets his GA pop. He'll come back up in a second, but Unicorns are more than equipped to deal with this right now. Sitting on there, Spirit flashing in, looking for Exile. Can Feb even finish him off? He can, but still the Nexus turrets are falling. Fnatic have to get back to base, but they've got nothing left in the tank. And this Nexus tower, Nexus is going all the way down to zero. 35 minutes in, the Unicorns do it again, and they are one game away from taking the series. Unicorns, so close to returning to that final stage of the gauntlet. They can play for a spot to Worlds and Fnatic right now. They've now won, they've now lost throughout a nine games in a row. This is their largest loss streak in their last 200 games. So if things couldn't get worse, if there was ever a time it's not LCS a you want to break. is supposed to be scripted and Fnatic are bound for the reverse sweep, it is now because like they're looking adversity in the eye. Things are not going well. There is not enough communication between the lanes and the jungler. And they picked the, the pocket Yasuo. You know, the surprise pick, and it just completely falls flat. Yeah, definitely wasn't enough. I, I like the pick and ban phase a little bit better up until the Yasuo for Fnatic, but they have got to find a lot more answers. The I way mean, they're playing in this game, I mean, this is not what we usually say a Fnatic team does. There's so many questionable decisions they made in the last several weeks. You know, having to sw they, they swapped out their top, and not that Kikis hasn't done well, but what does that do to team cohesion? Daler left right before the start of playoffs. What does that do to the team mentality? You don't know, and right now Twitter. Fnatic aren't looking too good. A lot of, a lot of Twitters, yeah. A lot of tweets is what they are leaving does. But no maybe, more engineers, that's sad. Maybe they should have put the Twitter fingers, made them into trigger fingers, and actually uh, practice a little bit more. Because Fnatic right now, they're looking like a, a grim shade of their former selves. And I have to give props to the Unicorns for their progression because while they're an incredibly wishy-washy team up and down, they did so well right now to develop and honestly mm -hmm. playing with clean macro. Like the fact that there was this one dragon that they started and they sent Vizichachi back to the top lane, which means if this dragon somehow stalls out, 
Visit Chachi will get leverage on top lane, which means Fnatic are put in a bind again where they have to return and the Unicorns get a free dragon. And worst case, he TPs in, and that's the exact fight that they won. And I think they got so much off. So this is such a good play right. by Unicorns. They were fantastic and well-earned in this 2-0 and zero that they've got themselves in their one game away from taking the win. Now, two games down, the Unicorns are on.